Okay, so hello everybody. Today we are looking at unpacking the O-level as a specimen paper. Okay, so let's take a look at the sources uh, and the questions first. For the first question, it is actually a higher order inference. It is an inference with perspective. So of course, you know that in the national exam is no longer ABC. Okay, uh, it is actually question one, question two, uh, question three, four, and of course, our infamous question five. Okay. Um, so for this kind of questions, when you have a, do you think the cartoon is supported the policy? All right. So you need to read the source uh, very carefully. You need to really make sure that you uh, unpack and you really understand uh, what uh, the cartoonist is actually um deciphering or the undertones of this particular source, all right? Now, for question two, how similar? It is a compare-contrast question. And in every compare-contrast question, definitely uh, you need to look at criteria. You need to look at the comparison. And a criteria is very important because definitely it is that statement of comparison that we are looking at, all right? And... Um, if you can find purpose, okay, go ahead and find purpose. But if you can't, just specifically look at the content and compare the content, okay? Now, for question three, why do you think the Minister of Manpower made this speech? It is a purpose question. And you can see that uh, in this particular specimen paper, the purpose question is seven marks, which means that there is that added element that they are looking for. Okay, um, so why do you think the minister made this speech? And sometimes you have questions where, where you have, why do they make this speech, um, for example, at this time? Okay, so this is easier because they give you that specific time context, correct? However, if they don't give you that specific time context, like this particular question, I think what you specifically need to look is the entire context of this whole source-based question, correct? I think that is what you need to see, um, and hence, uh, background information is very important. Okay, now for question four, it is a surprise question. Having read source E, are you surprised by source F? So first step, definitely you need to ask yourself, what is the element of surprise that as you are reading both the two sources, you sort of uncover and unpacked. And at the end of the day, what is important is for you to look at source F. Okay, what is surprising about source F? What is not surprising about source F? All right, now let's take a look at question five. The policy of employing foreign manpower has had a negative impact on Singapore. So this is not an agency kind of question. Okay, so this is really an impact sort of question. So this is a, yes, it has a negative impact. No, it has no negative impact. But you need to sort of like um, unpack what is it by the meaning of impact? Impact in what areas, right? Impact um, who? Impact what? Impact how? So these are things that you need to take note of, okay? Um, who, okay? Um, what areas are impacted, okay? Uh, perhaps even time frame, all right? This is just a generic um, unpacking of this question. Okay, um, and if it's an impact, you can also look at it in terms of, is it a social impact? Is it an economic impact? Um, is it a political impact? Correct? Because we are talking about a policy. We are talking about employing more foreigners in Singapore. Okay, so now let's take a look at the background information. So always remember, uh, time yourself. You only have one hour and five, five minutes. So time is of the essence. Okay, so how far have Singaporeans welcomed foreign manpower into the country? So when you have a question and the key big question is literally about how far, correct? Uh, you definitely will know that, okay, it's going to be some sources are going to tell me that yes, um, they are welcome. 
and there will be sources that will say, no, it's not welcome. Okay, so automatically your mind should, uh, should start framing for, for questions like this. All right. Now, foreign manpower has been closely associated with the development. So in the national exam, quickly read and quickly just sort of annotate um, very fast at the corner or just highlight certain things. So closely associated with development, uh, it is to supplement local workers. Um, they invite from foreigners, professionals to low skilled. And in fact, it has grown uh, in 2014 to about this number. Okay, now over the years, you can see that always have another color pen or highlighter. Singaporeans have mixed feelings about employing foreign manpower. Okay, so you have the first part, which is, I would say, um, it is quite positive in that sense. And then you have, of course, uh, the opposite. Okay, so let's take a look at source A. Now, it is uh, the question, if you remember, uh, about uh, does the cartoonist support the policy of foreign manpower, right? And if you look very carefully, um, if you have the specimen paper, here it actually shows uh, productivity. All right. And here, if you look very carefully, it says here foreign manpower. And of course, you have the Singaporean all right, or the Singapore as a country and a local cartoonist view. So it feels very um, good because, you know, obviously productivity and having uh, the foreign worker does help Singapore's productivity. But on a hindsight, um, you also have to look at why the cartoonist is drawing this. What is the relationship between the Singaporean as well as the foreign worker? Is it, a, I would say, is it an equal relationship? Correct? Is it built on uh, things that um, is normal, you know, or working together, cooperating together? Because if you're cooperating together, you don't step on someone's back. Agree? All right. So these are nuances that you have to look at, especially when it comes to a cartoon. Okay. So um, you need to see what the cartoonist is trying to say. You need to see whether or not the cartoonist is actually being uh, pretty much sarcastic. All right. Is this a mockery? Uh, pay attention, like what I said, to where the foreign worker is. Okay. And of course, for this particular kind of question, you need to make a stand. Okay. So the writing guide, uh, a yes, no, the cartoonist supported, the cartoonist does not support, and of course, you just explain it. Okay, so for this, uh, I'm very sure you have already gone through in class, uh, does not support, okay? And you can see that, you know, it feels as though the Singaporean is not contributing it um, by himself. Okay, it shows that it is because Singaporean has been standing on the back of foreign workers. So specifically, when we talk about this, this is really about your source details. And this is really you um, sort of describing your source details. So if you have a cartoon, you definitely need to make sure that you do describe your source details uh, a little bit more. Okay, um, and this shows disrespect and suggests that Singapore is doing well on the back of other people's efforts. So um, the only thing about this question is you do not misinterpret. All right, now let's take a look at source B. Okay, but of course in the exam, when you are looking at all the sources, you must find time to read all the sources uh, at one go, about 10 minutes. I'm just going to go through question by question, okay, um, just because I want to unpack. But in the real exam, what you need to do is you need to read all the source-based question uh, at one go so that you have a clearer understanding and you would know uh, specifically how to unpack the sources. Okay, so let's look at source B. You know, source B is definitely um, a survey of sorts, a study. Okay, and you can see that, um, you know, about um, a group, about 2,000 Singaporeans, okay, um, and at a specific age. So studies are always very skeptical. It's either you believe them 100% or you don't, okay? So these are things that you need to... Uh, take note uh, and you need to be careful about. 
Okay, so look at specifically source B and you can see that it is really about um, the survey question itself, all right? 44.8% um, actually did agree that um, the job security is sort of compromised, okay? Um, and there are about 37% uh, uh, who wants to move away or emigrate because there's too many foreign talents here. Whereas you can see, actually, the neutral as well as the disagree, it is actually more than the agree. Okay, so not all Singaporeans feel that way. All right. Um, there are uh, enough Singaporeans who feel that there are job opportunities for every Singaporean in the next 10 years. So I think um, that shows that positivity in this particular source. Now let's take a look at source C. Okay, now so C is part of comments by a foreign manpower, uh, about foreign manpower by a Singaporean. Of course, this is a blog post. So definitely a blog post. It is their own um, personal statement. It is their own personal point of view. Okay, and it says here that they are worried. Okay, uh, won't be able to find a job. Um, and in, it, it includes... Um, Perhaps um, jobs which are pretty much um, the blue collar workers. Okay. Um, however, uh, companies have to hire foreigners to take up this job. So it does show that there is a need for foreign workers. Correct. Now, some Singaporeans have decided to leave Singapore to spare their children the painful stress of going through any competitive education system. So this talks about this leaving Singapore, right? Uh, later on, I'll just highlight a little bit. Um, and it, there is a lot of complaint, okay? But there is a government policies that have been introduced and um, they are trying to curb um, foreign workers by introducing levy or difficult, um, make it a bit or slightly difficult to hire foreign workers. Now, I wanted to show that sometimes when you come back on trust, it is really about when, especially when you are looking at criteria, all right? You need to look at keywords or sometimes key ideas. So I want to just show you that, okay, this part here where it says that Singaporeans want uh, to leave Singapore, right? Okay, bring back to this particular source and shows here that they want to, uh, uh, emigrate because there are too many foreign talents here. So obviously, this is a difference by itself, correct? This one says that Singaporeans want to leave because of the competitive education system. Whereas uh, the other source actually talks about um, having too many foreign talents here. So sometimes when you look at criteria, what you need is definitely the keyword and key ideas. Okay. So uh, what Skills do you need? Definitely uh, identify uh, the similarities and the difference in criteria. Now, criteria should be in your own words, definitely. Okay. Um, and to go a higher level, specifically for combat contrast, of course, you need to take note of purpose. Okay, sometimes there are purpose, sometimes there, there, there no, there's not a clear purpose for compare contrast. But do do remember that when you are looking at purpose, you must make sure that the source has an identified audience. Okay, there is no way um, a, you can do purpose without identifying audience. I think that is very, very important when you even want to consider to do a similar or difference based on purpose because sometimes. Actually, there is no purpose specifically for any of the sources. All right. Uh, think very carefully. Do you think there is a purpose for source B? Is there a purpose in source C? So uh, this is the writing frame. I think uh, you guys would know, and especially you know words like similarly, um, in comparison, however, they are different, they are similar. I'm very, very sure that you guys have uh, sort of understood how to write a compare contrast uh, question. But let's take a look. So what are they similar about? Uh, so they are similar because they both show that people are concerned. All right. And it shows that, you know, in source B, it feels like a lot of job security is being threatened. Okay. Um, compromised because of foreign talent. And if we were to scroll back to source B, uh, this is the one. 
Okay, this is a source detail. So what if let's say you have like this, right? Numbers, right? Infograph, right? So you have to code. You have to make all of this into uh, a sentence of sorts. Okay, so uh, the first line argues that many Singaporeans are worried because there are too many foreign talents here. So we are talking about here, many Singaporeans are worried. Okay, so worried and here is compromise. So, you know, there is this, um, there is this fear or there's this anxiety about having foreign workers. Now, next bit, they are different because why they wanted to leave. This is what, the one that I was telling you. Uh, they wanted to leave one is because uh, there's too many foreign workers. The other one is really because of the education system. All right. Now, for this particular question, there is um, sort of a similarity. Okay. However, um, I would like to highlight that this is not a similar in purpose per se. Now, this is overall a positive opinion. So what is a positive opinion here? It is basically what I'm trying to tell you is really about the tone of the two sources. The tone of the two sources. So this is not really um, a purpose quest. It is not really a purpose kind of similarity. Okay, this is not a, um, it is really about the tone of the two sources. Now, both of the two sources highlight the overall positive opinion. Okay, um, I think so. See why? Because if you look very carefully, if they were really, really, really super upset about the foreign workers, then uh, the disagree would definitely be lower and the agree be higher. There will be less neutral. Agree? Okay, and comparatively, um, source B, you could consider that yes, um, so this is source B. Okay, uh, the figure is significantly lower than those who are neutral than those who disagree. So in terms of numbers, definitely in source B, it does show a very positive opinion. Source C does show that, okay, specifically, um, it is in the first chunk of the paragraph where this is the part, okay, these are the jobs, companies, some Singaporeans have decided to leave, yes, but you see, they leave because of education system and not because of foreign workers. All right, and it is really about having the Singaporeans loss of talent. So the negative part is specifically just here, won't be able to find a job here. Because this part here actually shows that the government, the second paragraph shows that the government has introduced uh, certain policies uh, to help curb this over dependent on foreign manpower. So overall, even though there's negativity, um, it is a similar in terms of the tone towards uh, foreign manpower policy. So you can see here, there's no specific what, audience, right? There's no specific audience. There's no specific, I would even say, an outcome. Don't have. Because this is not a similarity in purpose. This is really a similarity in terms of opinion, tone of the two sources. So just take note about that. Okay, let's take a look at the next question. Now, the next question is an extract from the then um, Minister uh, for Manpower, Mr. Tan. Okay, and he is, okay, so remember when we talk about purpose questions, the context of the question is very, very important. Where it was actually mentioned, who the audience are. So specifically, look. Now, this is a source with a provenance that has an audience, International Migrants Day Celebration. So obviously, when it's an International Migrants Day Celebration, you will be somewhere where there are migrants. Agreed? Makes sense. Okay. So here, how do you know? Okay, so let's say you do not know that this International Migrants Day is for migrants. Look at the first line. Foreign workers, and there are many of you here. So obviously, this is really for um, a foreign workers day, a foreign uh, migrants day kind of thing, okay? Um, and all the things that's being sort of underlined in pink really tells you uh, something very specific, tells you that, you know, um, they are important, correct? They also tell you that they have, um, in this source, it tells you that they have made very significant progress. Um, and as you can see here, so he is, he is trying to sort of win the hearts and minds of these uh, foreign workers, okay? 
and specifically uh, this heart shape installation is a representation for Singaporeans who are grateful for you. So it does show that this was actually done uh, with regards to actually appreciating uh, the foreign workers here. Okay, now this is in December 2014. Take note of the year. Because if I were to jump slightly into source E, okay, and just for the sake of jumping in and to help you to look at the context of it, you can see that in source E, there are people who are very upset. And this was um, a protest in 2013. That was what I wanted to highlight to you. So, um, is context or in view of always in the background formation, I would say it depends. Context means you can look at it in background formation, you can look at it in the other sources, you can look at what is happening based on the big question, based on the big theme of it. So the whole idea here is really, really about, okay, there are unhappiness, okay? There is also unhappiness in, uh, let's see, there is also unhappiness in source C. There is also unhappiness since March 2011. So definitely there is also some unhappiness that is already mentioned in the background information, although there is no specific year. They have mixed feelings about the government um, policies, but there is unhappiness. So this minister is here talking to foreign workers. He has... I would say a certain thing that he needed to, um, to address, correct? Uh, while it is a simple purpose question, we must be very careful, like what I said, we need to identify the correct audience, we need to identify the outcome and always look at the bigger context. What is the bigger context? You can look at background information, you can also look at other sources that make sense to you. Okay, all right. And if you look at uh, the writing frame, I think you must, must remember, do not write to show to tell, very superficial, okay? So always remember, you know, to convince, um, it could be to convince, it could be to persuade, it could be to condemn, to criticize, all right? So these are things or these are message statements or message verbs that you need to be very, very careful about. So um, I like this word a lot. I think it is a very good word to use. It is to reassure foreign workers that they are valued by the government and people of Singapore. Okay, And he was aware that there was a lot of negative opinions. Correct? And definitely he said, uh, that Singapore still needs uh, workers to help the economy uh, specifically growing. Okay, and the outcome must come from foreign workers. All right, um, and specifically, the answers must be presented as a reason. So this all was written specifically why? It was uh, in view of something, isn't it? It was written in view of the very fact that um, there were a lot of negative sentiments, correct? So uh, this source or this speech was made in view of the negative sentiments. Okay, this part, the negative opinions, negative sentiments. Okay, that Singaporeans have towards our foreign workers. I think this is an important bit. All right, this is the important bit that you need to take note. Okay, there are. So if you can write a little bit more, that will really help you to uh, deepen your answer. Okay, all right. Now, the next question, um, we have sort of unpacked this a little bit, all right? We talked about um, a protest, a very unhappy, it's very, I would say it's a very negative source, definitely, okay? And then you have, let's take a look at source F. So this was taken in 2013, please remember that, whereas this was taken in 2009, 
but of course, disclaimer, uh, this person has been living in Singapore for 11 years. So um, it is again a foreign worker and 11 years of experience. So let's see. Now, the Singapore government has been trying its best to maintain calm by assuring its citizens that foreign workers are essential for Singapore's future. Okay, and he says that definitely um, he has worked with a variety of professions and he has more local friends. And many of them are glad that foreigners like me have made Singapore our home and contribute actively. So the question is specifically based on this too. Hmm, are you sure that's really happening? Okay, so study source E, having read source E, are you surprised by source F? There is an element of surprise, isn't it? Like, you see people here literally saying that Singapore is for Singaporeans. And then here you see is that many of them are glad. But obviously, the time difference um, is very, very important. Okay, 2013 as well as 2009. So this, that is this element of surprise. But how do you write um, all these things together? Okay, so let's take a look. Um, I'm surprised because he has more friends, right? Uh, from Singapore and his own country. He seems to have integrated. So obviously, um, it is when you are surprised about something, it always has to be uh, the opposite. Correct. It always has to be an opposite um, content or opposite opinion. Okay. And then you say that, oh, uh, it is not surprising by what source F, specifically source F, because the writer of source F is saying that the government has been trying to reassure people about employing foreigners. Okay. And this shows that there has been some opposition. Um, and you can see that that is in source E. So it is not surprising that um, in source F, uh, there has been, the Singapore government has been trying uh, to assure its citizen because of what is happening. So it is not surprising, okay? Um, I would say that this, yes, is a good paragraph, but it may not give you the higher marks, okay? Now let's take a look at this, the I'm not surprised, but now I'm not surprised blah, 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 okay? Um, and it is a cross-reference specifically uh, to source D, okay? This is just that they would likely to be more friendly as the writer of source F had found. Although source E seems to be taken to represent the feelings of the whole of Singapore, only a minority attend such demonstration and it does not mean that everyone feels the same way. Okay, it does not mean that everybody feels the same way. That means it is not surprising that source F is actually a very uh, positive experience because it is really, really true. And um, there are Singaporeans based on cross-reference. So this is not surprise due to cross-reference, cross-reference uh, specifically to source D to show that Singaporeans are actually very supportive. Okay, um, it's coming up. All right, so here is the not surprise bit. So it does show that, okay. Um, of course, you can talk about timeline. You can talk about the feelings of 2009 versus 2013. There is a difference, right? Um, how people feel. So this is really basically on the context of what is happening. It is a possible answer, okay? So what you need to do for surprise questions is just to make sure that even if you're surprised or even if you're not surprised, the key is to always cross-reference, cross-reference, cross-reference. Either you cross-reference based on context, you cross-reference based on purpose, you cross-reference based on another source, which is what I would recommend. Okay, so the next question now, which is usually sometimes the killer question, it is a 10 mark question. Now, what you always, always have to do, like I said, always unpack the question. Um, could some sources show both? I think this is the one that um, could be a bit worrying. Okay, can the sources show both? Yes, of course it can. So if it does show both, then you decide on whether you want to take uh, which part of it. That means it's, is it uh, a negative impact? Or is it a positive impact? So it is, at the end of the day, up to you. Okay. 
um, you need to unpack. Okay, it is basically this uh, link or uh, some people say consequence of a consequence. Some people say the larger outcome, the larger context. It means the same. It means that you just need to answer back to the question and what is the, I would always like to say the so what, so. Okay, um, so let's take a look at this. Now this particular, uh, let's look at this. Okay, so this does, the policy of employing foreign manpower has a negative impact. Now, if you look very carefully, nope, it doesn't really have a negative impact because it brings about productivity. So you need to say that I disagree. Now, always, always, always remember, do not make the same mistake of saying sauce agrees. Do not make this mistake. Okay, it is very, very, very uh, tempting, um, but it is the worst mistake to make, okay, especially for question five, the 10 marks question, all right? So I disagree with the statement. The policy has a positive impact. Uh, source A, the graph shows productivity, and hence, through the contribution of the foreign workers, Okay, it enables Singapore to progress rapidly. It leads to economic growth and stability. So this is the link. Okay, of course you can use this and you can question the reliability of the source where uh, the cartoonist is actually being sarcastic or the cartoonist is actually being um, being um, being mocking. You know, the, the cartoonist is actually mocking uh, the people of Singapore for making use of uh, foreign manpowers, yes. But for this, definitely it is this. So this would be a level two, two. Okay, now next bit, um, I want to look at this sauce. So obviously it has a negative impact, right? Okay, let's take a look. Uh, shows most clearly the dislike, that dislike of foreign uh, workers. Okay, give source details, explain source details. Now, foreign manpower has a negative impact. And the reason, obviously, it is because it is a threat to stability and harmony of Singapore. So this is your link. So again, two sides, yes and no, is a level three, five. That is our minimum to get. Okay, so just... Remember that your link is not super long. Your link is not super hard. It is basically answering back to the question. It has a negative impact. How? What? Okay. Um, so same thing with all the other sources. Now, um, of course, when we talk about sources, we talk about the bonus bit. Okay. Um, and specifically, we are looking at... Um, Two, three things, three aspects of the bonus. We are looking at first, uh, questioning the reliability, uh, utility or sufficiency is really about questioning the reliability. And we talk about source E, right? Okay, and um, if you remember source E, source E is really basically about this. Okay, just because you have a picture that says Singapore for Singaporeans, it does not necessarily mean that it is reliable. So that is why um, when you want to do bonus, make sure that you choose one that is perhaps very extreme, correct? It's unreliable and uh, it is a distorted image, okay? Um, look at the last line. The image alone does not prove that it's a bad thing and how Singaporeans actually think. So it is a very important statement because it does tell you specifically that um, it, it's not necessarily all right, um, that this source is reliable in relation uh, to the theme or in relation to uh, the topic itself. Okay, now moving on, um, can you use your contextual knowledge? Of course you can, provided that you have uh, a lot of contextual knowledge. Okay, so for this one is about source D, about remember the International Migrants Day. Okay, so let's take a look. Um, look at this. Okay, he wanted to remember, reassure the foreign workers. Okay, so he is doing this because he knows there is a concern to social harmony in Singapore. And it is true specifically because of the Little India riot. 
All right, and how the Little India riots specifically or unfortunately uh, undermine the stability of society. So um, specifically this particular source, uh, you need to make sure that your CK is very solid and your CK links to the very fact that it is about foreign workers. So you have to be very careful about, about using um, contextual knowledge, okay? Of uh, course, this, all this tool, you have to do it. I mean, I would advise you to do it straight after you have written this source. Okay, that means after you write source E, straight away you write the questioning reliability. After you write source D, you can straight away write uh, your bonus marks if you are gunning for bonus marks. Only um, balance conclusion, okay, uh, you do it at the end. Uh, I would definitely recommend the uh, uh, balance conclusion sometimes because you know negative impact how do you define there's both positive there's both negative okay the only thing about using this particular source is that you must make reference to the sources no choice you have to make that reference to the sources okay and you can see that in this there is a reference to source b Okay, and there is this always this ending statement. The sources show that there are two sides of the argument, there are two perspectives, and then the government is responding to find a harmonious solution. So it is always about that finding a balance. Okay, that's why it's called a balance conclusion or a resolution. Resolution means is there a solution to it? So some of the questions in question five is um, can I means the last bit, you can always look for uh, or you can always consider a solution. At the end of the day, what is the solution that you can offer? All right, because you're talking about a conclusion, you're talking about uh, a student who has read all the sources and sort of like understood um, how he or she is able to see both narratives, both points of view. I think that is very, very important. Okay, so um, I really hope that um, this very simple unpacking does help you to uh, glean some of the points that you need to take note of.